Hi, welcome to my little house. This is my living room, also called the great room. I love this space because I've got this giant skylight and right next to the heater. It's actually a really sweet spot to hang out. Dee Williams lives in a spare but stylish home measuring 84 square feet. It's powered by propane and solar energy and it sits comfortably in a friend's backyard. Dee pays no rent and no mortgage. Her utility bills, $8 a month. This little house fits me. It's very simple, simple ty type of living. The whole um, kind of cultural ethic of consuming more and having more as a way of feeling good about your life, I think people are turning that upside down a little bit. It's a turn more and more Americans are taking. Proponents say hundreds of people from all kinds of backgrounds are now living by choice in eco-friendly homes smaller than 400 square feet. A group called the Small House Society lists more than 60 architecture and building firms which specialize in tiny houses. And many of those report a serious uptick in business over the past three years. The small house movement, it really is a movement. The decision to downsize is definitely a trend. People are simplifying. Dee built her home herself using blueprints she found on the internet and enlisting the help of friends with carpentry experience. It cost her $10,000 and took three months. Constructing a house is a huge amount of energy and I felt like I had muscles on my muscles. I glued my hair to the house accidentally one time. It's uh, made out of kind of traditional materials except for the fact that a lot of the materials uh, were pulled out of dumpsters. She moved in in 2004, giving away most of her stuff and leaving behind this 1,500 square foot split level, a home she now describes as giant. My little house is smaller than my old bathroom. Uh, I know because I measured it. But Dee says her new, less cluttered life has brought her a contentment those extra 1,416 square feet did not. It's definitely retooled me and reoriented myself so that I, I've had an opportunity to really explore the difference between what I need and what I want. She gives visitors a tour of her house and her lifestyle with considerable pride. This is my kitchen, which is, of course, very elaborate. I've got a one burner stove. I eat a lot of soup and stir fry and coffee. That's about all I cook. This is my wardrobe, which involves mostly pants and shirts for work. Dee has been an investigator for the Washington State Department of Ecology for 19 years. I've got three pairs of shoes. Two of them are outside. The other one sitting right here. Uh, so essentially, like, if I get a new shirt, I get rid of a shirt. This is the sleeping loft. I have the skylight. I've got this window. It's pretty spectacular, actually. Then Dee shows off the room, she says, people ask about most often. This is my bathroom, and it's a composting toilet my elaborate cosmetics, my towel. Something major is missing from Dee's bathroom, running water. Many little homeowners have working showers, but Dee says she decided against one because she was worried her amateur plumbing would cause leaks. Instead, she showers at the home of Rita, an elderly friend, in exchange for helping around Rita's big house. For now, Dee's house is parked in Rita's backyard. And like many tiny homeowners, Dee built her house on a trailer. I uh, decided to build it on wheels because I wanted to be able to take it with me into the future, not knowing what my future was. When she wants to move or just take a vacation, the house goes with her, hitched to her biodiesel truck, of course. As Dee and her house traveled the country these past few years, a strange thing happened for a woman who likes things small and simple. She became a bit of a celebrity. That's her on the Tyra Banks show, demonstrating the size of her house. With the publicity came a barrage of email from people intrigued by the little lifestyle. I've heard from a lot of people uh, that are interested in downsizing and actually in building little houses, like in some cases, 
they've lost their job and they're moving back in with relatives, but they don't want to live in the same house. So living in the backyard is, uh, would accommodate their current economic situation. Tiny homes are sprouting up everywhere now, from the suburbs of Texas to the plains of Wisconsin. This 336 square foot home has a metallic finish and floor to ceiling windows. This one is constructed from previously used pine lumber. Tiny house advocates prefer to call it vintage. This is a break package. So any capitalizing on the trend, D and professional carpenter Katie Anderson started what you could call a tiny construction company last year. Yes. Should I move this to here though? Yeah. The company, Portland Alternative Dwellings, hasn't turned a profit yet. They hope it will next year. But Dee says the real return on their investment is the satisfaction they get training people to build their own small homes. At a workshop in Oregon in June, seven students worked with Dee and Katie to build the foundation of a 200 square foot home on wheels for Matt Cooper. I've always uh, sort of had a fantasy of building an off the grid, uh, self-contained living unit and uh, this would allow me to do that and then it's so small it's feasible. Matt, who's married with a baby, originally thought of the new structure as a summer home. But he and his wife, who both work at a small human resources company, recently learned they will likely be laid off by winter. We've certainly discussed this becoming our primary residence. Toilet. So this will be kind of like the bathroom right here. And then uh, I think my wife is a bit more apprehensive. She feels pretty attached to the, the home that we have here in Portland. But just the idea that uh, we would always have some sort of a structure that we could go to and use and, and be relatively comfortable, I, I find to be somewhat liberating. Then we're also going to take the, the rafters that come down this way. We're Other students in the workshop include Paige Gratlin, a flight attendant learning to use power tools for the first time and Jen Cleesey and Kim Langston, a young couple who plan to build matching mini homes. Both of us are building tiny houses because we're wanting to um, get out of debt culture. I mean, I grew up in Las Vegas, Nevada. I grew up in a place that was built on big and immediate. You know, everything was about, you know, showing to the outside world what you're you're capable of, you know, money-wise. And mm -hmm. I think when I moved to Washington, I wanted something different. Kim and Jen's lives in Olympia, working in a food co-op and farming their own veggies, are about as far from the Vegas Strip as you can get. Homemade, self-sustaining tiny houses would complete the dream. And just a few hours into the workshop, it's all starting to seem real. I feel like actually physically starting to make the frame and kind of like the, the nuts and bolts of that. I feel like, oh my God, we can totally do this. Like, this is so possible. The workshop's final moments add to that sense of possibility. After eight long hours of building, Dee Williams leads her team of enthusiastic amateurs as they raise the first wall of a new tiny home. Ready? Lift with the knees. Lift with the knees. Lift with the knees. It really is like an Amish barn raising where everybody has to pitch in, everybody has a role to play. It's this big, heavy thing that you're, you're lifting up into place. You see uh, a two-dimensional uh, dream or idea on paper. You see it suddenly become the beginning of a house, and, and it's so satisfying. It's awesome.